United States now faces weak partner in time of war with the White House's reluctant embrace on Sunday of Hamid Karzai as a winner of Afghanistan's suddenly moot presidential runoff. President Obama now faces a new complication enabling a badly tarnished partner to regain enough legitimacy to help the United States find the way out of an eight year old now going on a nine year old war and it will not be easy as the evidence mounted in late summer that Mr. Karzai's forces had sought to win re-election through widespread fraud to defeat his main challenger Abdullah Abdullah administration officials made no secret of their disappointment and disgust how do you consider sending tens of thousands of additional American troops? They asked in meetings in the White House to prop up an Afghan government regarded as illegitimate by many of its own people. The answer was supposed to be a runoff election. But now administration officials argue that Mr. Karzai will have to regain that legitimacy by changing the way he governs, theoretically at a moment when he is politically weaker than at any time since 2001. We're going to know in the next three to six months whether he's doing anything differently, whether he can seriously address the corruption, whether he can raise an army that ultimately can take over from us and that doesn't lose troops as fast as we train them. One of Mr. Obama's senior aides said. Needless to say, the senior aide added, This is not where we want to be after nine months. Or perhaps after nine years even. And that is a huge understatement. In the early days of Mr. Obama's presidency, he and his aides searched desperately for a plausible alternative to Mr. Karzai. And they have found none. Since the spring, there's been little doubt Mr. Karzai would remain in the presidential palace after the election was over. The question was whether that vote would demonstrate that a desolate nation that has always been at the mercy of larger powers would show it could find its own way. President Obama's decision last March to add 21,000 troops was justified in part by the need to assure a relatively peaceful, fair election, and that is not going to happen. So in essence, it's been a time of wasted money and energy. The idea was to bolster Mr. Karzai's credibility so that his authority would reach beyond Kabul, the capital. Here in the United States, Mr. Obama began scaling back American ambitions. With the advice of his defense secretary, Robert M. Gates, he dropped the BUSH era talk of turning Afghanistan into a Western style democracy. He carefully avoided the word victory, which the last president had used so often. He narrowed the United States military objectives to destroying Al Qaeda, still, which is thought to be based largely in Pakistan, while simply subverting the Taliban's ability to once again take over the country. All we need to do is degrade the Taliban enough for the Afghan army to be able to deal with them. One of Mr. Obama's top national security aides said recently. James Dobbins, who tried to formulate an Afghan approach for the last American president's administration and wrote of his frustrations as attention turned, turned to Iraq, told Congress earlier this year that the objective should be to ensure that fewer innocent Afghans are killed next year than this year. In a counterinsurgency campaign, he said, this is the difference between winning and losing. But even Mr. Obama's most limited goals require a legitimate government in Kabul, one with the authority to manage the army and to rebuild an incompetent and corrupt police force. It also needs the ability to install 
competent governors and spend Western aid effectively. Before the election was effectively ended with Mr. Abdullah's withdrawal from the November 7th runoff, President Obama asked his national security aides and the State Department to come up with an agenda that could press on Mr. Karzai. It included reaching out to his political opponents, cleaning out the worst of his governors and ministers, and announcing a major new push on corruption. And then there's Mr. Karzai's brother. Some have said he's a heroin dealer. And he's on the payroll of the CIA. That's certainly not a good sign either, some would say. And it includes peeling away through whatever inducements work the least committed of the Taliban by trying to pay them money or at least those with no links to Al-Qaeda. If this is to be a turning point, said Senator John Kerry, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, who helped twist Mr. Karzai's arm to accept he must go along with a runoff. We must strengthen the capacity of the Afghan government and insist that its leaders embrace lasting reforms after all these years. The United States has already spent approximately a quarter trillion dollars in Afghanistan, all the while talking about those lasting reforms. The last American president's administration made periodic efforts to warn Mr. Karzai that his own family's reputed links to corruption and drug dealing threatened his government. So in essence, the United States is being somewhat hypocritical here, saying that, well, opium or heroin is against the law, but all the while, putting the president the president of Afghanistan's brother on the CIA payroll? There's something wrong with that picture, if it be true. The United States has sent mission after mission to teach good governments, some of which succeeded and some of which ran into what former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice called the Afghan allergy to dictates from foreign occupiers. For eight years Yes, now going on nine. The United States and its allies have been struggling mightily to train an Afghan army. While it currently has a force of more than 90,000, American commanders put the number who can sustain themselves in a fight at probably less than 50,000. That's clearly not going to work. And in the end, that force, an Afghan army that can be trusted to defend the central government, is President Obama's way out of the country, so they say. If that army could emerge as a trusted one in Afghanistan, somehow able to control significant areas of the country with the cooperation of the local tribal leaders, President Obama could be able to declare that the country cannot again be overrun by militants or the Taliban. Only then could he pull back from what he termed over the summer as a war of necessity. Anyway, there's something wrong with the Afghanistan war. It doesn't appear to be going so well. A corrupt, illegitimate government, basically, is what they're saying here. And there's something much more going on here. Something much bigger. It's part of a bigger picture. And these are more signs of the end times transition days. The transition is happening. An ongoing process. It is an effect. And it's happening all around the world. Day by day. And there are many signs. <laughs>